end of the universal catechism, the centralization of the Catholic Church. Alert fellow Catholics, it is official news from the Vatican News site of February 15, 2022, with this title. The Pope transfers to the bishops competences reserved to the Holy See. With the motto proprio Francis has established that the ordinaries of the local churches will be able to intervene in the management of seminaries, priestly formation, the writing of catechisms, and other sectors without asking for the approval of the Vatican. But a simpler confirmation. As a particular novelty, the motto proprio transfers from the Holy See to the diocesan bishop, the faculty to create a seminary in his territory without having to wait for the approval of Rome, but simply his confirmation. The objective of this motto proprio is to promote a healthy decentralization that will make decisions in the ecclesial sphere more dynamic, the Vatican has expressed. A similar possibility is granted to the bishops with regard to priestly formation. The bishops can adapt it to the pastoral needs of each region or province. It also grants competence to the Episcopal conferences to publish catechisms, intervenes by transferring from the Holy See to the local churches the responsibility for decisions on possible reductions in the number of masses to be celebrated with respect to intention and receptions. Comments. We have already seen how quickly the Church is losing the universal value through the synodal path. Since this also includes the proposals of the Lady to create a new Church not for God but for men, after the motu proprio that overthrew the Tridentine masses, this new motu proprio now comes with more rigor to overthrow the last universal catechism of the Catholic Church, approved by John Paul II in 1992. Dear brothers and sisters, be very clear. According to this new motu proprio of Francis, the catechism ceases to be universal. The Church ceases to be universal. It is no longer a single church. It is a divided church, although it may not seem so to many. Each bishop can write a catechism for his diocese. Then we are no longer in the universal church, which is the definition of the Catholic Church. But we are in the church of each diocese. And the differences are going to be very big between some dioceses of the world. And it is possible, God willing, that many dioceses will remain holy and continue to adhere to the universal catechism. But many will have reforms that will destroy the tradition of our Holy Mother Catholic Church. With this so-called healthy decentralization, many bishops like those in Germany who have allowed the LGBT movement within the Church who have come out in favor of abortion and other irregularities, will have the opportunity to create Catholic sects within the Church, which is no longer the Church Christ founded. Clothed with the new powers, the bishops will be able to form priests in their own way, independent of the faithful magisterium, which no longer exercises its traditional power. Let us thank God that we can still enjoy some traditional dioceses, even though they are all affected by the harmful modernism that began at Vatican II. Let us only trust that the formula of consecration will not be changed, for there are already rumors of a consecration that speaks of the liquid of Christ and not of his precious blood. Among other words, it says, they can drink of it, all of you, for this is my liquid. This liquid is the new and everlasting covenant. If this happens, then it will be the end of the perpetual sacrifice. The sanctity of the sacrament will be lost. 
the Lord will remain in his church until the end of time, but not in those modern churches within the church, but in the tradition that is still preserved in some priests and laity. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I will be in your midst, says the Lord, Matthew 18, verse 20, and I will be with you until the end of time, Matthew 28, verse 20. The church is crumbling. It is forming into clusters of Catholic cells here and there, where the faithful remnant is preserved. May the Lord protect our faith. I have been reproached by several priests for speaking clearly these truths. I suffered persecution for not washing my hands of the apostasy, blasphemy, heresy, idolatry, profanation, and sacrilege that the church is suffering. I cannot be a hypocrite. I cannot be a new dog. I cannot accept the new false doctrines of men, Acts 5, verse 29. The Lord found this sin in the priests of his time, and now history repeats itself. Let us pray for all priests and bishops, for the true church is shrinking before our eyes, and we all have the responsibility to pray like Jesus, so that unity in truth is not lost. If you like this video, please give us a like, share it on social media, and leave your valuable comments. What do you think of all these changes that occur frequently in our church? God bless you.